I'm Weston, I love talking about the Astros, and I'm here to recap Game 5 of the regular season. Astros lose to the Angels 7-6, we out hit them 11-10. Now, say with me guys, we lost a game. Does it suck? Yeah, I would have liked to have won. Uh, especially this game, I felt it was very winnable. Uh, but we didn't, and that's okay. Um, it's gonna happen, we play so many games in the sport of baseball, the best teams are gonna lose 60 games. That usually... The very best team in baseball usually still loses 50 games. Like, that is unheard of in every in any other sport. Like, and I know it's because the other sports play less, but you have to think about it like that. Um, you also have to look at it as the Astros are playing their fifth consecutive road game to start the season off, which is pretty difficult. And it was our fifth starter on the rotation uh, starting tonight. So, I'm not pressing the panic button. Uh, and I don't think any fans should. It was one game, and we still didn't even look that bad offensively. Like, yeah, there were some times where our situational hitting was bad, but we still scored six runs. That is still above average, run and a half above average to be exact. So, without any further ado, let's actually get into the recap in the first inning. The Astros lead off with Jose Altuve getting a single. Yuli then singles to right, but two runners on with no outs. Bregman hits one to left, and then Upton... Uh, Justin Upkin comes running up on it. He just can't quite get it. Misses it a little bit. Altuve comes around to score. It's one nothing Astros pretty darn early. Uh, then Jordan cues one over to Rondon. Uh, only gets one out with it, so the runners advance to the corners. Then Correa comes up, and he actually got a hit for once. The Astros and Correa this season have felt like they were contrasting teams, it almost felt like. Whenever Correa would do something good, the rest of the Astros wouldn't either be on base to you know, score runs with his hit or do anything with his hit to score him. And it was finally something happened. He got a hit. Yuli scored two nothing Astros. Tucker grounds out. Both runners advance though. Diaz comes up. He strikes out, but Kurt Suzuki can't make the catch on the strikeout. Can't contain it. So another run scores three nothing Astros, and then Straw grounds out. But a very productive first inning where they go up three uh, nothing. And then in the bottom half, fly out, fly out. Trout walks. Um, should I act shocked? It's Mike Trout. He does that. And then Rondon strikes out to end the inning. And at that point, I'm like, hey, maybe a fifth in a row, eh? We wouldn't. Uh, second inning, Maldonado strikes out. Altuve flies out. Yuli walks and Bregman strikes out. Bottom half, uh, ground out. Then a line out, a bullet by Pujols to Bregman that he snags. And then a fly out in the second in the inning. third, Alvarez and Correa and Tucker go 1-2-3, which was a bummer. Uh, then in the bottom half, leadoff walk to the first batter, uh, and then a fly out, fly out, ground out ends it in the third for uh, Luis Garcia. Couldn't think of it there. In the fourth, the Astros get another run. Diaz walks, Straw walks. Mal Martin Maldonado decides to bunt for some reason, but it was a little too good of a bunt, if that makes any sense. It went right back to the pitcher, so we got the runner at third. So essentially, we traded Diaz and Straw at first and second for Straw and Maldonado at first and second. Uh, then Altuve singles into left field, and Miles Straw, who is super fast, comes around just. Boy, when he gets into a full sprint and really gets going, it is so entertaining to watch because he can just get moving for nothing at that point. Uh, the Angels then make a pitching change. They walk Yuli Gurriel. The bases are loaded for Alex Bregman, who comes up and strikes out. And then Jordan, bases are loaded, and he flies out, which is a bummer. Uh, bottom half of the fourth, Mike Trout just destroys a home run. Like it, It's Mike Trout. He was fantastic tonight for the Angels, which... I feel like we're at a point in baseball where Mike Trout just does this on a nightly, <clears throat> and it's not going to be noticed. He had, like, what, like, two or three RBIs tonight, he had that massive home run, he walked a couple of times, but it's Mike Trout, and this is just going unnoticed, because he's easily the best player in baseball, and it's kind of funny to me, because he was insane tonight, but it's probably going to go mostly unnoticed. Uh, after that, run Doan singles to right. Upton skies one down the right field line, and Yuli and Tucker just can't either one of them get there, so it drops. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's time to uh, pull Garcia. We don't. And then after that, a pop-up. An RBI single makes it 4-2. to two. We need to pull him at this point. Uh, he walks Suzuki on an awful pitch, and then Dusty finally decides, all right, now it's time to do it. A little bit late, in my opinion. I think it could have still been... 4-1 to one at that point, if he would have, you know, done it a little bit faster. What have you, he brings in Ryan Stenick, who three-pitch strikeout on the first batter, and then gets the next one, uh, Fletcher, to fly out. Cool. Only two runs in that inning. We're still in the driver's seat. Let's keep on rolling. In the fifth, Correa shatters his bat. 
uh, getting a leadoff single in that inning, which was pretty, or double, excuse me. Uh, Tucker strikes out, Diaz grounds out, and Straw grounds out. Cool. Back to the, you know, not helping Correa out. Correa doesn't help us out. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, in the fifth, Dusty Baker decides to bring in uh, Brooks Raley, which I really did not like that move. Um, Ryan Stenick looked fantastic. He hadn't gone since, I believe, Saturday, and granted, he went kind of deep, but he hadn't pitched much to here. It was only two-thirds of an inning, and you're pulling him. I didn't like that decision, like, at all. Uh, and it turned out to be a bad one. Uh, a run would score on this. So there's a single to br- just over Bregman's head, and then he strikes out Trout, which was... Uh, that pitch was outside, and Trout knew it. Trout was irritated. The pitch, the strike zone, by the way, and it was for both teams, was just highly inconsistent. And it was really bad, because after the Trout strikeout, uh, Rendon gets a walk. Now, I'm not particularly mad like i'm not saying oh the astros lost because of bad striking ball walk. that's stupid no i'm not saying that because it was bad for both teams but mike trout struck out in a full count on a ball that was in the exact same spot that he threw to rendon in his full count it was a strike for trout and it was a ball for rendon which meant he walked and it was just my god it was so inconsistent tonight uh then upton comes up he singles to left and scores a run it's four to three Pujols flies out and diaz is basically running backwards to catch it which i thought was kind of funny and that ends the fifth but we're still up Six, four maldonado three. leads off with a walk altuve strikes out yuli flies out bregman hits a single and oh my god they used wrc plus on the broadcast to show who was the best hitter since 2019 and that made me so excited uh it it I was so pumped when I saw that statistic pop up. I was like, oh my god, they're doing the thing! Uh, then, Jordan hits a single into uh, right field. And Maldonado scores on the play. Now listen, I think Maldonado was out by a mile. I I don't know how you call that... Let me phrase this. I know how you call that safe, right? The dust cloud, he beat it by a good margin. So yeah, call it safe. The Angels challenge, but you can't really overturn that because you don't have definitive evidence that it was out because of the dust cloud. So it's safe. It's five to three, which is all that's all cool and dandy, right? Uh, so that happens. Then Correa grounds out because of course he does onto the bottom half of the seventh or the sixth, excuse me. Abreu comes in, goes one, two, three in that inning, which was fantastic. In the seventh, Tucker flies out, Diaz grounds out, Straw beats out an infield single, and then a Bach moves him over to second, where then Maldonado would ground out, I believe. Uh, bottom half of the seventh, ground out uh, to Yuli, who flips it over to Abreu for the first out. Mike Trout singles because he's Mike Trout. Uh, and again, this is just to talk about this for a moment. Um, the same pitch here on 0-2 is called a strike, that before to Rendon was called a ball. And it, the strike zone was just comically bad. Uh, Rendon pops out, and then Upton grounds out, and it's the seventh. In the eighth, Yuli singles, Bregman grounds out, there's a pitching change, and then Jordan grounds into a double play in the shift. Bottom half of the eighth, uh, Joe Smith enters the game. Uh, back-to-back hits, this is pretty bad, and at this point I'm like, okay, you need to pull him. Shohei Otani pinch hits, and he gets hit. For some reason, Shohei Otani looked at Joe Smith... I think it was just a frustration of, I really wanted to hit there, not a, hey, why did you hit me on purpose? I don't think that happened. Shohei Otani doesn't seem like that type of person to get upset about it. So I'm going to rule that as just, he wanted to get a chance to hit there and didn't, which was a bummer for him. Uh, At this point, the bases are loaded, and they rightly say, hey, Joe Smith, uh, you're out, put in Blake Taylor. Blake Taylor comes in, first batter, single, five to four. Okay, it's starting to shrink here. Bases are still loaded. Fielder's choice, but another run scores. Now it's 5-5, five to five and it's tied. Yuli does this iffy throw to home, and he doesn't get the out, so now it's 6-5, to five and there's still no more outs. He maybe could have joined that double play and kept it a 5-5 five, five game, but he doesn't. They intentionally walk Trout. Rendon does a sack fly to make it 7-5, uh, so they have a two-run lead, and then we get the final out, but that at that point, it was pretty much over. In the ninth, Correa grounded out. Tucker hit a home run to make it uh, seven to six, so he tried to make it close. Uh, he has an RBI in every single game this year. Uh, McCormick flies out, and then Garcia, uh, Rober Garcia, uh, pinch hits for Straw, and he pops up to Stassi to end the game, seven to six, which was pitching a lines. Luis Garcia went three and one third, four hits, two runs, one strikeout, three walks. 
Ryan Stennett came in, two-thirds of an inning, one strikeout, nothing else, no walks, no hits, no runs. Uh, Brooks Raley came in, one inning of work, two hits, one run, one strikeout, one walk. Brian Abreu came in for two innings of one hit, no run baseball, nothing else of note for him. Uh, Joe Smith came in, and is basically the reason we lost tonight. Uh, no outs recorded, two hits, three or three earned runs, a hit by pitch, and nothing else. And then, at that point, Blake Taylor came in to try to stop the bleeding. One inning of work, one hit, one run. It was not earned. No strikeouts, one walk. So that's it. That's the game. We lost. 7-6, uh, to six, close game. We played pretty well. But we lost. Uh, I thought our situational hitting was very bad. We left a lot of guys on base. I want to actually, really quickly while I discuss what all I thought I felt we did poorly, I want to get the left on base. Uh, total left on base. 11. 11 left on base. Uh, team RISP running, or uh, runners in scoring position hitting was 4 for 17. Say with me, everybody. We played a bad game. Along with that, I also thought our pitching left a lot to be desired, and I thought Dusty Baker called a pretty poor game. I don't know why you pull Stenick, and yeah, I don't know why you pull Stenick at that point, and I don't know why you wouldn't have pulled Garcia a little bit earlier. Now, we lost. A winnable game. Don't panic. Don't, don't freak out. It's one game. Uh, it's our fifth consecutive road game that we've played in as many days. And I understand you play a lot. It was our fifth starter in the rotation, and it was basically just a bullpen day more than that. We still put up six runs in our bad game, which is, again, six runs is our lowest for the season, which is insane. Uh, all in all, there's a lot that we can learn from this game, and there's a lot we can take from it. Should we panic? Not yet. Even if we would have got clobbered, it's one game, you know? And the big thing with baseball is you're going to play 150 games by the time that some people are just starting to put their Halloween decorations out. Like, we're going to play a ton of baseball this year. <clears throat> this is one game. And every game matters. That is very true. But let's not just completely pump the brakes and lose our minds over this. Take it for what it is. It was a loss. It was bad. We need to move on. You know, a few hour rule. As soon as... It's already probably getting close to uh, midnight out in L.A. As soon as it hits midnight, as soon as it is the next day, as soon as it is tomorrow, turn the page. That's it. And tomorrow, Zach Greinke will be back on the mound to hopefully right the ship. He's coming off a shutout in his last game. So, that's it for this game. I want to thank everyone. Uh, the recaps this season have just been blowing up. It's been really insane how well they've done. And I am just truly blown away. My goal was 10,000 views by the all-star break and i'm at like 8300 when i made this goal a week ago i was at like seven and it already went up like 13 which is mind-blowing to me that it went up that much in just a week uh my subscriber goal for the all-star break was 200 and it went up like 50 like that i'm already at like 181 which is crazy and now game four the recap for game four is now my most viewed astros recap which is crazy uh, and it also has a chance to pass the Week 14 Jets recap, which is my most watched recap in general. Uh, along with that, uh, Game 3's recap is my third most viewed recap video for the Astros, which is just crazy. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. I want to quickly apologize if I sound a little funny. I'm a little uh, nasally stopped up, so I apologize for that if I sound a little weird. But yeah, that's it. Granky's on the mound tomorrow. It starts at, I believe, 4.40 Eastern Standard Time. I want to make sure about that. Yep, 4.07, excuse me, Eastern Standard Time. And I'll recap the game as soon as that is over with. So thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day. And as always, go Strohs.